Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video, we're going to get started implementing our tested approach to file upload. In the previous two videos, we've implemented an untested approach to handling file uploads inside our Easy Admin Bundle backend. And whilst this works, we've tied ourselves very heavily to the way that Symfony works, in particular, the way that Symfony's file upload process works. And on the surface of it, this doesn't seem like that big of an issue. But when it comes to writing our tests, it does kind of throw a spanner in the works. What we're about to do is to revert back to the way our code was structured at the end of video 18. To do this, I'm going to check out the code as it was when we tagged our code at the end of video 18. So I'm going to use glog, which in my case is a shortcut for that command. So I'll say glog and I can see here a list of all the commits in this project. And the one that I'm interested in is this CF521. So let's press Q there and then I'll do a git checkout with that commit hash. And so we've now checked out that code, but to start working on it properly, what I'm going to do is as it says, git checkout dash B and then a new branch name. So I've got a shortcut for that and I'll just call this vid21. Now, as part of the previous two videos, we made a number of changes to our database. So rather than trying to revert them manually or anything like that, I'm just going to drop the database, then recreate it. After which I'm going to apply all the migrations and then I can repopulate the database using our fixtures. One thing that I'd like to do before I reload my fixtures is just make that change that we saw during our prototype phase, where if we look inside our wallpaper entity for the file property, we're not going to want that column annotation. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And because I've made a slight change to our schema as a result, I've removed a column. I'm going to come back into here, just press the up arrow once there to get our previous command back and do a diff. Now just make sure that we've got that drop file column as part of our migrations. Control L on a Mac there to clear the screen and I need to apply that migration. So again, just up arrow there and we'll apply the migrations. And with that change in place, we should now be able to reload our fixtures and our database should be back to its expected state. So with all of that set up out of the way, we can get back on with testing our implementation. So we already have a spec for our event listener wallpaper upload listener. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open that by splitting it vertically, closing that one down, having that one open as well and closing down the sidebar. And just to make sure that we all know where we're at, I'm going to do PHP vendor bin PHP spec run and then spec app bundle event. And because it's the only one, I can just hit tab a few times there and we can see we're pretty much where we were at at the end of video 18. As you've gathered by now, it's not true TDD, which we're practicing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refer back to our reference implementation here. So inside the repositories on GitHub, we've got the wallpaper website tutorial. What we need to do is get to video 20's commit, which is the most recent one at the time of recording. And I'm just going to browse the files as they were at this point, go into the source app bundle event listener wallpaper upload listener implementation. And this is what we were dealing with when we had a working file upload process. So in order to port this knowledge across to our test suite, let's just quickly step through what this does so far. So we'll start off with the first line, which is to store the outcome of event args get entity into a variable called entity. Now lifecycle event args has this method get entity. We don't need to worry about how the entity will be set. That's something that Doctrine is going to do for us behind the scenes. But what we do know is that this pre persist method is going to be called whether this is a wallpaper entity or a category entity or any other entity that we come up with in the life of our system. So what we need is this guard statement that says if we're not dealing with a wallpaper, then just exit early so that we don't end up doing a bunch of logic needlessly. If we get past that return statement, then our entity must be an instance of wallpaper. We're adding in this type in just to make PHP Storm able to understand what our entity is and therefore give us some nice auto completion on our methods. One of the properties on our wallpaper entity is the file. Even though we're not storing that information in the database directly, when dealing with an upload, the file will have been set. We know that it will be an instance of Symfony's uploaded file. So we can use the methods that are available on that class or any of its base classes, which is the file and the SPL file info as we need to. On the SPL file info, there's get path name. We can call that and we can figure out exactly where we're at currently. We created a new service, which would allow us to take the uploaded files file name and then concatenate it with a path that we care about, which in our case is our project directory, then the web directory inside that, and then the images directory inside that. And that will become our new file location. With those two pieces of information, we can move the file from wherever it is currently 
to the location that we want it to be in the longer term. And then we were getting a little bit fancy there to pull out the width and the height dynamically. And finally setting some properties on our entity. So the most important part of this for us is going to be getting access to the file. How we get access to that file is when we go into Easy Admin Bundle into our wallpapers and we do our add wallpaper. We've set up a form in our Easy Admin Bundle configuration. So go under App, Config, Config, Easy Admin Bundle. And we've got this form here which tells Easy Admin Bundle how to create a wallpaper or what field we would need to create a wallpaper. And the important one here for us is this property file of type file. And what that's going to do is it's going to add one of Symfony's file type form field types to the outputted form, as you can see here. Now, because this is a Symfony form, the way in which the implementation behind the scenes works will be the same way in which a Symfony file upload always works, which is how we get to having a Symfony uploaded file instance as part of entity get file. So knowing this, let's put this information into our tests. It's going to close down some of this to make it a little bit tidier. And so inside it can pre-persist. Let's start adding in some of this new information. So we know we're going to get access to some form of uploaded file instance. So let's add that in as something that we're trying to mock. So say uploaded file. We'll just tap that in there as well. Uploaded file. Let's pop that in. And we'll say whenever uploaded file get path name is called, we will return, so we'll return our fake temp path. So again, looking at the code, we're going to get the temporary location when we call file get path name. So we've just faked that there and said when that is called, we expect to always give the fake temp path. Okay, so next what we'll do is we'll put this uploaded file onto a wallpaper. And rather than mocking that, we'll just create a new one. There's nothing really that we need to mock here that we couldn't use a real instance for. So we'll say wallpaper set file and we'll put in that uploaded file. And again, looking at our code, we can see that we're going to call event args get entity. And so when we call get entity on event args, which we're currently mocking, what we're going to do, making sure to do this after wallpaper has been set up, we'll say event args get entity will return our wallpaper. So all things being well, even though we've not got this file mover move set up at the moment, the pre-persist part of this test should kind of work maybe. Well, let's give it a shot. So we get an interesting exception here, which is to say that the file was not found and the file speech marks does not exist. In other words, this empty path or maybe this empty file name, it doesn't exist, which we kind of know it doesn't because we're trying to fake it. But this kind of leaves us with a problem. If we can't fake it or if we can't mock this file, then what we're going to do. So the next thing that we might try and do is to rather than use this mocked version, we'll get rid of that and we'll just create a new instance of it. So we'll say uploaded file equals new uploaded file. And we can see this takes a couple of arguments which are not optional, the path and the original name. Well, we have a fake temp path, so let's just pass that in. And we can give it any name that we like, I guess, some file, as that's the name of the file that we're kind of faking. Because we're not mocking this, we don't need to tell it what to return because we're passing in the temp path anyway. When path name is called, that fake temp path should be returned. At least that's the theory. So let's give that a shot. Now we've got a slightly different error. The file temp some file does not exist. And indeed it doesn't because we've just tried to fake it. And that file doesn't actually exist in that, this location. So PHP can't find the file as you would expect. And at this point we seem to be in a really bad position. We can't mock the uploaded file and we can't use a real instance. So how on earth do we proceed? Well, all of this is a result of us losing control of the way our system is working. Rather than making Symfony bend to our will, we're bending to Symfony's will. Now there's like a golden rule with PHP spec, which you will see banded around, which is to say, don't mock what you don't own. We neither own the lifecycle event args nor the uploaded file. So to finish up with this video, I want you to think about how we can start owning the concept predominantly of the uploaded file or a file in general. And we will look at one way of solving this problem in the very next video.